Here we are at the second part of section 8.3, still called special right triangles, but we're going to do a different type of triangle right now, and I'll just uh, write it down what it is, okay? We, earlier we did a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This time we're doing a 30, whoops, not 30, 30, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it's a triangle that has a 30 degree, it's a right triangle, which is the 90 degrees, and the other two angles are a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, and that's the type of triangle that we have. And here is triangle and I'm going to start off using that right there is not a 30 60 90 triangle because look there's no right angles in this at all but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to come up with this little special property it's actually two properties on the 45 45 90 we just had one little formula the hypotenuse is the equals the square root of two times one of the legs this time on the 30 60 90 we're going to have two of them but I want to kind of show you where it comes from, and I think it's not that hard, so I think you can uh, follow along and see where this comes from. First thing I'm going to do is uh, let's tell you what kind of triangle I have here. I have an equilateral triangle, which means all three sides are equal to each other. What I'm going to do here on this equilateral triangle is I'm going to start at one of the vertices. We'll just start at this top one, and I am going to draw a perpendicular line. Okay, so it goes down to here like this, and it's perpendicular. What that does is this. It gives me, um, if that's perpendicular, there we go right there. Uh, these two sides are equal, so these two angles are equal. Um, let's see what else we have. These two sides, this side right here would be equal. I'm trying to, oh yeah, there we go. We've got angle, angle, side. So these two triangles are congruent to each other because of angle, angle, side, which means that these two angles right here would be equal to each other because they're corresponding parts. You get the idea, which also means that these two little parts right here are going to be equal to each other. So that's pretty important. Um, and here's another thing. Let me think about this. Oh yeah, this is equal lateral triangle. So this big angle, this angle right here must be 60 degrees. Remember, an equilateral triangle is also equiangular, so that's 60, that's 60, and this whole thing right here has got to be 60 as well. But I'm not really worried about the whole thing, I just want to know each individual angle. They're equal to each other, it's 60, so each of these must be 30. So each of those angles is 30 degrees. Now check it out, look what I have. I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle now, don't I? 30, and there's my 60, and there's my 90, so I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What I want to do is I want to see uh, some type of relationships between these sides and, and that kind of thing. So let's do this. Let's go a different color here. Let's take a look and just label this segment from here, from this part all the way to here. That's the midpoint, right, because it's split evenly. So, um, yeah. Just trying to make sure I didn't leave anything out. I think Yeah, I think I covered everything. So this side right here, this little bit right here, and this little bit right here would be equal to each other. Let's just call this X. And so that means that this side right here is going to be X as well. Now watch. Remember, it's an equilateral triangle. So this whole entire bottom is equal to this whole right side and also equal to this whole left side. So if I call this little bit X and this little bit X, what's the whole entire thing then? Well, the whole entire thing would be 2x. Well, if the whole entire th bottom is 2x, what's the whole entire right side? That would be 2x as well, and that would be 2x as well. So that's pretty important. And basically, um, that kind of shows us one thing right here. It shows us this. We'll call this little bit right here, we'll call this the short side. Let me do this in a different color. Um, we'll go green. So this little bit from here to here We'll call this the short side. I'll clean this up a little in a little bit. Okay, I'll just, just work with this right now. If this is x and this is 2x, this is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 2x, and we'll call this the short leg. Now remember, we're not just going to call it the leg, because I actually have two legs to this 30, 60, 90 triangle. I've got this one, which looks a lot longer than this one right here, and then I got the hypotenuse. So I'll call this the short leg right from here to here is the short leg and from the top down to the bottom I'll call that the long leg the longer leg we'll just say the long leg all right so I've got a hypotenuse I've got a long leg and I have a short leg and there's relationships between these and the first one is easy to see 
Look at the hypotenuse compared to the short leg. This is 2x, this is 1x, so the hypotenuse is how many times more than the short leg? Well, it's twice. It's exactly two times as large. So let's, we got some room over here. Let's write it right here. So on a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which we have, the hypotenuse is exactly twice the short leg. All right, that's pretty important. Hypotenuse is twice the short leg. Now, if you wanted to go the other way, you could say the uh, short leg is half of the hypotenuse, but we're gonna keep it like this. The hypotenuse is exactly twice as big. So if the short leg was five, hypotenuse is 10. If the hypotenuse was 12, then the short leg is six. Pretty easy, that's a simple relationship. That's even easier than the 45, 45, 90 triangle uh, with the square root of two, so that's pretty simple. What I want to do now is I want to find some kind of relationship between this longer leg. What I'm going to do is figure out the relationship between the longer leg and the short leg. How am I going to do that? Well, I've got a right triangle, and I kind of I kind of know uh, two sides of my right triangle. So what can I use to find that third side? If I know two sides, how can I find the third side? Well, I could do what we did in the other lesson, and that's Pythagorean theorem. Remember, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, I don't know what this is. Uh, you could call it anything. Let's just call it a. All right, so we'll call this length, this up and down right here, a. We already call this x, so let's keep that x. And we already call this 2x, so let's keep that. So what do we have? It's going to be a squared plus b squared. What's the b? The b is the other leg, and it's this one right here. We're not calling it b. What are we calling it? We're calling it x. So I'm going to go plus x squared equals the hypotenuse squared, c squared. What's the hypotenuse? I'm not going to call it c. What have I already called it? I've already called it 2x, so let's put 2x, and I have to square it. Don't just write 2 and then x squared. I have to square this whole entire thing. That's very important that you do that. So you're squaring the whole entire hypotenuse. Why in the world are we doing this? Because I want to find some kind of relationship between this long leg and something else, all right? So let's see what we have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually solve for a. I'm going to get a by itself. So I'm going to solve for a in terms of x. That's how we say it when x is kind of part of our answer. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's get rid of the x squared from both sides. And actually, before we do that, let's simplify this 2x in parentheses squared. So it's going to be a squared plus x squared equals, what's that going to be? 4 x squared. Now we can get rid of the x squared. Subtract an x squared from both sides. So a squared equals 4 squared minus x squared is 3x squared, right? 4 of these minus 1 of these is 3 of these. Again, I'm trying to find uh, what a is equal to. So I take the square root of both sides and we're getting real close here. So what do we have? We'll just write that as the square root of 3. What's the square root of x squared? Remember that x squared is inside of that square root. How do we simplify that? Well, the square root of x squared, the square root and the squared cancel each other out, so it's x. You're like, okay, well, big deal, who cares? Well, this is a big deal because it's another relationship that we have here. Now I know the long side. See, that is the long side and x is the short side. So I wanted to find a relationship between the long side and the short side. I already did it between the hypotenuse and the short side. Now I'm gonna do it between the long side and the short side, which is x. So the long side equals the square root of 3 times the short side. So I'm going to write that right here. I'm going to put the long side is equal to the square root of 3 times the short side. And there you go. There's our two relationships. I said we were going to have two for this one. We only had one on the other one. But this one has two of them. First one's not that hard to remember. The hypotenuse is exactly twice as big as the short side. Well, the long side, that's the one that's a little bit trickier for people to remember. But if you think about it, look, 2 is the same thing as the square root of 4, isn't it? Well, the long side, it's not the longest side of the triangle, okay? It's the longer of the two legs. I keep saying side, but it's the longer leg. That's the short leg. Long leg, short leg. The long leg is still going to be smaller than the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always the largest side of a triangle. So look at this. The long leg is just a little bit smaller than the hypotenuse. Well, if the hypotenuse is square root of 4, what's just a little bit smaller than the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 3 is. That's how I kind of remember it. Remember, the long leg is just a little bit smaller than the hypotenuse. So if this is the square root of 4, this is the square root of 3, which is just a little bit smaller. If that helps, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just remember, memorize this little formula. 
Hopefully you don't have to go through this whole mess again. We did it once. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time you use this. We did it once. That won't be on a test or a quiz or anything like that. All I, The only reason I did that is to show you where we get that square to three from. Because some people usually look at that and like, what in the world? Where do we get the square to three? Just pull that out of the blue? No, we didn't pull it out of the blue. We did Pythagorean theorem and it worked out to be the square to three times the short leg. All right, so there you go. Well, I'm sure you have a question on how are we gonna do this? How is this gonna be used uh, on the homework and on the quizzes and tests and all that kind of stuff? Well, let's do a couple examples and hopefully we'll make it um, a little bit, um, make, it, uh, make a little bit of sense for you. Okay, I started off with a fairly easy one. If you look at the example in the book, it's example three. They don't start off with a real easy one. I thought I'd start with a super easy one first and then kind of build up from that. So this is about as easy as this possibly gets. Well, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And there's one thing was I was setting this thing up that I forgot to tell you, that how do you know which one is the long side, which one is the short side? Well, you know which one's the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. But how do you know which was the short and the long side? Well, look at the angles. Remember the theorem we talked about in another chapter that said that the shortest side is going to be opposite the smallest angle. So this is going to be your short side right here. This is your hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And this Y right here is opposite the 60. So that's going to be your longer leg or your, we'll just put long for long leg. So it's important you know which one is which right here. That's really important. So I thought I'd, I'd share that because I just completely forgot to say something. So let's try to figure out and solve for x and y. Let's do the hypotenuse first. That's probably a little easier. Do you remember the relationship between the hypotenuse and the short leg? Remember, they both relate to the short leg. It's the hypotenuse is something times the short leg, and the long leg is something times the short leg. The short leg is the important thing here, okay? That's the that's the important side out of this triangle. They both relate to the short side, so we or the short leg. So we need to know what the short leg is. So the hypotenuse is equal to what? It's twice or two times the short leg. Watch how easy this is. What's the hypotenuse? Well, in this case, it's x equals two times the short leg. What's the short leg? It's 21. It's just simple multiplication. Pretty easy. It doesn't get much easier than that. And that's 42. So x is equal to 42. Simple. If I know the short leg, that's the easiest one. When you see a problem like this and it's 30, 60, 90, and they give you the short leg, sigh, have a sigh of relief and know that this is a, um, one of the easier problems that you'll get Okay, when they give you the short leg. What about the long leg? Long leg is really not much harder. I'll tell you the truth, I think it's a little easier because right here, at least you had to know how to multiply 2 by 21. You actually don't have to know how to multiply anything uh, when to do the long leg on this particular problem. What's the long leg equal to? It's the square root of 3 times the short leg. All right. The long leg, what are we solving for? That's y, so we put a y right here, equals the square root of 3 times the short leg. Again, what's the short leg? It's times 21. We, remember, we don't write it like that, so let's make it look a little bit nicer. But we don't have to do any multiplication at all. You can't multiply a square root times a whole number. The only thing you can do is put them right next to each other. So I'm going to put the whole number first, 21, and then the square root of 3. And then that's my answer right there. Look, I didn't have to multiply anything. Right here, at least I had to multiply 2 times 21. Right here, all I had to do is stick two numbers next to each other. And that's it. Well, that's it for this problem. That's about as easy as it gets right there. Okay, when they give you the short and they ask for the hypotenuse and the long, it doesn't get much easier than that. Okay, let's take a look at another one that takes a little bit more thought than what we just did right here. It's not much harder, but just a little bit of a twist. All right, look at the difference between this one and the one we did earlier. Which one's the short leg? Well, if that's 90, this is the hypotenuse. And if this helps you writing these down, which one's which, by all means, go ahead and do that. After a while, you probably don't need to do that. But if you want to do that at first, that's fine. So this is opposite the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. This is 60 degrees, so this right here is opposite the 60. That's your long leg. And then, of course, if that's 60, this has to be 30, and this has to be the short leg. So that would be the short leg. If that helps you, by all means, go ahead and do that. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the short leg and the hypotenuse. Now remember on the last one, we said if they told you the short leg, it makes it pretty easy. This one's a little bit more difficult. Um, this is probably the harder of the different possibilities um, that they will give you to do. So 
what do you want to do? Well, let's do this. Let's start with this first of all, because they actually tell you what this leg is. All right, they tell you this side right here is 15. That's your long leg. So do we ever do we have uh, something with a long leg in it? Sure we do. So the long leg is equal to what? The square root of three times the short leg. So let's see if we can use that. Well, sure we can because short leg's a variable, it's x. The long leg I know, so I can actually solve for x using this thing right here. So let's plug some stuff in. What's the long leg? It's 15 equals the square root of three times the short leg. What's the short leg? Well, it's just x. I don't know what it is, so I'll just put an x right there. So we're trying to find the short leg, so we're trying to solve for x. Divide both sides by square root of 3. Divide this by the square root of 3. Hmm. Remember in the other video, we simplified the, uh, we rationalized the denominator. Remember you have a square root right here. You don't want to leave it like this, and you don't want to throw it into the calculator and get a decimal answer. We talked about that in an earlier lesson. So what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of that square root of 3 in the denominator. And how do we do that? Well, what we do is we multiply it by itself. So I take the square root of 3, multiply it by itself, which is the same thing as squaring it, and you'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom. Now, why can I do that? I put that in a different color just to show you. Anything divided by itself is a 1. I can multiply anything by 1 and not change the value of it. So I'm perfectly fine um, multiplying by a 1. And it's not just any old one, it's a one so that I can get rid of that square root of three. So let's see what happens. Let's do the bottom first. What's the square root of three times the square root of three? After a while, you don't even have to think of doing any math at all. The square root of three times itself is the square root squared. The squared cancels out the square root and look what I'm left with. I'm just left with three. Or some people like to look at it like this. The square root of three times the square root of three is the square root of nine. What's the square root of nine? It's just plain old three. So you can look at it a couple different ways. After a while, you wouldn't even have to think about it either way. All you got to do is look at it and you're like, oh, that's three. All right, so get used to that and because you, you're going to see that kind of stuff a lot. What about the top? Square root of three times 15. So remember, we always put the whole number first and then the square root second. Okay, that's just kind of a preferable thing to do. Is it wrong if you write square root of three and then 15? No, but everybody writes like that. So be like everybody else. We tell you to be different all the time, don't we? But in this case, be like everybody else and write 15 squared of 3. Now, we're not finished because look what happens. This 3 does not cancel out with this 3 because this is under a square root. But it does cancel out with this 15 because they're both whole numbers. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 15 five times. Now, we finally have an answer. X is equal to 5 square root of 3. That's how I'm going to write this answer right there. 5 square root of 3. So that's my short side. That's the x. What am I looking for now? Now I'm looking for the hypotenuse. Remember what the hypotenuse is? After a while, you won't have to write these down at all. But I think at first, when you're first learning these things, I think it's important to write it down. The hypotenuse is twice the short side, two times the short side. So if I know the short side, which I do, just found it just a minute ago, if I know the short side, all I do is double it, multiply it by 2, and I've got the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is y equals 2 times the short side. The short side is 5 square root of 3. And that's an easy multiplication. Just multiply the whole numbers together. 2 times 5 is 10 times the square root of 3. And there you go. There's your y. So that's your x, and that's your y. Um, it probably won't get a whole lot more difficult than that. I think that pretty much covered it. Okay, we rationalized the denominator. We had to find the short side. They didn't tell you the short side. Um, if they told you the hypotenuse, it's just about as easy as knowing what the short side is because all you got to do is take the hypotenuse, take half of it, and you get the short side. Then you take the short side, multiply it by square root of 3, and you get the long side. So this situation right here is probably about as difficult as it gets doesn't get much more difficult than this. All right, so if you can handle this, you're good to go. All right, uh, we kept this under 20 minutes, so I hope you enjoy that part of it, and uh, good luck when you uh, work on this stuff on your homework.